Before the Reformation, violence is not always considered evil, but sometimes a means to a righteous end. Today, I think most Christians in the Western world are in agreement that violence is inherently evil. And Christians should not resort to violence. That, um, that's, that's always sort of a last resort. It's not what we would choose to do, although there may be times where we need to um, use violent means. But we would certainly not want to use violence in the cause of religion and for specifically religious purposes. That's a view that comes about after the Reformation. Prior to that, the understanding is a bit different in that people understood, and this goes back to late antiquity, understood violence as in itself neutral morally. What made violence good or bad was the end that it served. And so violence in terms of resisting correct or correcting evil was seen as a good thing. And this extended to religious goals, religious ends, and holy wars. That changes with the Reformation. There are a number of incidents within the Reformation culminating in the Thirty Years' War in the 17th century that caused Europeans to reject violence in the name of religion. Uh, the suffering of these wars, especially the Thirty Years' War, was so great that there's just general agreement that we should not do this anymore. But Christian history is not a good record at all on, on nonviolence, and the Reformation didn't improve it, got a Thirty Years' War out of it. And uh, we still try to make sense of that. Everybody's just killing everybody in the name of God. Protestants will link with other Protestants to kill Catholics. Catholics will link with other Catholics. It's just all over the place. Luther always thought that the church should do without warfare and power and violence. He, he was clear about this from the beginning. In fact, early on in the Reformation, uh, some knights in the empire offered to lead a rebellion in his name and for his cause, and he politely declined that. He, he was never interested in that sort of a reformation. And that also colors his reaction to the Peasants' War, where you have this series of peasant uprisings that ultimately becomes a full-scale war or rebellion or whatever you want to call it, with the peasants at least in part claiming justification in Luther's understanding of Christian freedom and they claim to be rebelling in Luther's cause. Does Luther's teaching contribute to the Peasants' Revolt? Well, yeah, it does. Luther's devastated by that reality and doesn't like it, but it does. I mean, it's one of these kind of unfortunate side effects. People take the freedom they have and they run with it. Well, this is what Luther discovers in the Saxon visitation. You know, have people misused the freedom they've been given? Oh, yeah, bummer. He had always said very clearly that Christians ought to support the government and if there's a conflict between what the government is doing and what you think should be done, you simply have to suffer the consequences then. By the end of the 17th century, the use of violence has become something to be avoided. There are certain incidents within the Reformation that, that bring violence into question. A good example is within the um, Anabaptist or Mennonite tradition. If people know anything about Mennonites today, they'll know that they are absolutely pacifist. Uh, they will not serve in the military. That came about as a result of a more violent movement within Anabaptism in the 16th century, where you had uh, radical apocalyptic preachers proclaiming that the city of Munster was going to be the site of Christ coming in the New Jerusalem. And Anabaptists flocked to Munster Eventually, the city was put under siege and taken and conquered, and um, numerous people were slaughtered. But the result of that led to the formation of this completely peaceful strain of Anabaptism, and that's the, what we know today as Mennonites. I think one of the challenges today is we're put in the position in our country, we're given a, a great deal of freedom to speak and decide for ourselves on things. And, and we have the challenge of deciding whether we believe a war is just or not. 
War and violence is a struggle at the time of the Reformation. It remains a struggle today.